Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be discussing another part of probability in sample space diagrams. Now sample space diagrams are exactly what they say in the title. It's a diagram where we can represent our full sample space. So all of our sample space is represented in one diagram. Harry flips a fair coin twice. So we're going to understand that Harry is flipping the coin and he's doing it twice. Using a sample space diagram, what is the probability of getting two heads? So the sample space diagram is going to help us with our probability. So it's just a way of representing probability the same way as um, a tree diagram. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to draw our sample space diagram. So our sample space diagram is going to consist of our outcomes. So on our first flip, we have two outcomes. It can be heads or tails. On our second flip, we have two outcomes. It could be heads or tails. So our way of, of working with a sample space diagram is that we are going to get our outcomes. So our first outcome would be a head and a head or a head and a tail. If, however, on our first flip we flipped a tail, then we'd have a tail and then a head and a tail and then a tail. So if I were to show you where these come from, this head is represented in the front over there. This head is represented over here. The tail, this tail is over here. And this tail is represented over here. So what we can tell from our sample space diagram is that we have four outcomes in total. So we have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. So those are our four possible outcomes. The question A says, what is the probability of getting two heads? So what's the probability of getting heads, heads? So as you can see, we have four outcomes in total. So they're four in total. And how many are both heads? One. Over here, we can see that we have one out of four chance of getting heads, heads. The next question says, what is the probability of getting at least one tail? Now, at least one tail means that it can also be the two tails. Because two tails, even though it's two tails, it's still at least one tail. So B's answer, the probability of at least one tail... is equal to, there are four outcomes in total. So I have four outcomes. How many of those four outcomes consist of a tail? Three out of four of them consist of a tail. Okay, so for this diagram, I drew it light so that you could kind of see how to draw the diagram. The next two questions, I have uh, already drawn the diagram. Richard rolls two fair-sided dice. Draw a sample space diagram to show all the possible outcomes. So I'm just going to pause over here on A. Richard is rolling two fair dice. So that means that my one option will be one to six, right? My one dice and my second dice will also be one to six. So when I draw out my table, it would look something like this. So I would have my first dice would have the values one to six. My second dice would have the values one to six. Now, if I'm filling out this sample space diagram, my first option would be a one and a one. My next option is if I threw a one on my first dice and a two on my second dice, or a one on my first dice and a three on my second dice, or a two on my first dice and a one on my second dice, or a three on my first dice and a one on my second dice, etc. So once I'm finished completing my table, it's going to look like this. So now I have a complete table, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, etc. All right, so the first question says, how many possible outcomes are there? How many possible outcomes are there? So we would simply be able to count the possible outcomes. Alternatively, we have six options on each dice and six times six is 36 outcomes. The next question says, work out the probability of getting a total of three. All right, so C, is the probability of a total of three. 
Now we know that the possible outcomes, we have 36 possible outcomes. So we want to know how many of those are, are threes. So if we look at our table, if I want to do a total of three, so I'm going to highlight it in blue, a total of three, we would have one and two, or we would have two and one. So those are basically the only options that we would have that we would combine the totals to give us three because alternatively it's either smaller than three or bigger than three. So we have a two out of 36 chance of a total of three and two out of 36 simplified becomes one out of 18. The next question says an even number. What is the probability of picking an even number? So if we're working with the probability of an even number, we could simply just say, well, we have 36 numbers and out of any numbers for every second number is an even number or every second number is an odd number, depending on where your numbers start. So we are starting at one and one, right? And one plus one is two. So we're starting on an even number. So we know that out of the 36 values on this table, we know that half of them 18 of them are going to be even and 18 of them are going to be odd. So we have a one out of two chance of having an even number. Alternatively, you could, if you wanted to, just check which ones are even and which ones are odd. So if I were to highlight it or put a yellow dot by the even numbers, one and one is two, that's even. One and two is three, so that's odd. So the next one would be even, one and three is four. One and four is five, that's odd. One and five is six that's even. If I looked at my next column, I have two and one, which is three, so that's odd. Then I have two and two, which is four. Then I'd skip one. Then I'd go. And so we'd be able to go through our entire table, identifying which values are even and which values are odd. So therefore, I would have an answer of one out of two. The next question says, a number greater than eight. All right, so for the probability of a number greater than eight, the number can't be equal to eight. So I'm going to identify all the numbers in my columns that are equal to eight. So if I look in my first column, I have one and one, which is two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, if I'm adding it together. So there's no number that's even equal to eight in the first column. In the second column, I have three, then I have four, then I have five, then I have six, then I have seven, then I have eight. So I have a value of eight, but now that's equal to eight. In my next column, I have four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight. In my next one, five, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight, seven, eight. Okay, now I've highlighted all the numbers that are equal to eight. But this value, we need the probability of a number being greater than eight. So all the numbers above what I've highlighted in pink are actually less than eight, which means that all the numbers underneath what I've highlighted in pink are greater than eight. So if I just count the values that I have underneath the pink, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I have 10 values that are greater than eight. 10 over 36 simplifies, becomes five out of 18. So I have five out of 18 probability of picking a number greater than eight. The last question says, which total are you most likely to get when rolling two six-sided dice? All right, so which total are you most likely to get? You can see that the totals work in diagonals. So if I look at my first diagonal, I have one and one, which is two. Then here, my next diagonal, I have one and two, which is three, and two and one, which is three. So that means that if I work in my next diagonal, I'm kind of putting a cloud around it like that. I have one and three, which is four, two and two, which is four, three and one, which is four. So that's the diagonal of four, which means that the number that you'd get the most number of times would be the biggest diagonal across your diagram. So if I look at the biggest diagonal across my diagram, the number I'm most likely to get would be a seven. Next example, Candace has two bags of sweets, A and B. In bag A, she has a strawberry, an orange, a lime, and a black currant flavor. In bag B, she has a strawberry, a black currant, and a lime flavor. 
Candace takes the sweets out at random from each bag. Draw a sample space diagram to show all the possible outcomes. So I've already drawn the sample space diagram over here. So I have bag A and I have bag B. So bag A has a strawberry, an orange, a lime and a blackcurrant flavour. And bag B has a strawberry, a blackcurrant and a lime flavour. So if I wanted to fill out my sample space, I would say the first option would be a strawberry from bag A and a strawberry from bag B. Or it would be the next option would be a strawberry from bag A, but a black currant from bag B, a strawberry from bag A and a lime from bag B, an orange from bag A and a strawberry from bag B, an orange from bag A and a black currant from bag B. And I would continue to fill out my diagram until it looked something like this. So I have strawberry, 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 black currant, strawberry lime, etc. And it's fully filled out, fully, <laughs> fully filled out. Okay, so the first question says, work out the probability that both will be strawberry. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to know our number of outcomes. So we have three, six, nine, 12 outcomes. Alternatively, we could say three times four, which is 12, because the one bag has four options, the one bag has three options, so together we have 12 outcomes. All right, so what is the probability of them both being strawberry? Well, we know that this is out of 12. How many of these sweets are both strawberry? We only have one option where both the sweets are strawberry. So one out of 12 probability of them both being strawberry. All right, the next question says, what is the probability that they'll be the same flavor? Now, in the one bag, there are four different flavors, and in the other bag, there are only three different flavors, so they can't both be orange because there's no orange sweets in the second bag. So they can both be strawberry, strawberry, they can both be lime, lime, or they could both be blackcurrant, blackcurrant. So we have three of the same flavors out of our 12 options and three out of 12 simplifies down as one out of four. The last question says, what is the probability that they'll be different flavors? Now for them to be different flavors, we could simply count how many are different, right? So we've got, it's not the strawberry strawberry, it's not the lime lime and it's not the black currant black currant. So that means that out of the 12 outcomes, we have nine left over. Alternatively, we could say the probability of them being different will be one minus the probability of them being the same. So that is one minus the probability of them being the same, whether I did it as one over four or three over 12, it's going to give me the same answer. And I have a three out of four chance I do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.